Hello, and welcome to Servant of Christ Ministries. In today's lesson, we are going to be unpacking the question on whether or not a person needs to attend church to be spiritual. Now, some may have the knee-jerk reaction to just say, well, of course we need to attend church to be spiritual. Or others may respond impulsively by saying, no, we don't need to attend church to be spiritual. I believe that both of these responses are inadequate and require a little more fleshing out in order to give a proper response. Let's get started. Before we even begin to answer this question, we must define terms. Otherwise, a clear answer will be impossible to ascertain. Let us take a look at two key words in this question that I believe need to be defined before we move forward. First, the term church in today's society is usually relegated to a religious institution or building where people gather. But is that how the Bible defines church? The Greek word for church used in the New Testament is ekklesia, which is defined as a gathering of citizens called out from their homes into some public space or an assembly. As you can see, the Greek term for church used in the New Testament does not refer to a specific building, but rather a gathering of people together as an assembly. Let us take a look at a couple of scriptures to make this a little easier to comprehend. In Acts chapter 8 and verse 3, it states, As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hailing men and women committed them to prison. Notice that the scripture states that Saul made havoc of the church by going into homes. If the word church simply means a religious building, then this would mean that Saul went into church buildings by entering into homes, which is a contradiction, because how could a person enter into a religious institution and into someone's home at the same time and in the same sense? This simply proves that the word church is actually referring to the people who believe in Jesus Christ, not the building where they gather. Let us look at another verse. In Acts chapter 11 and verse 22 it reads, Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas, that he would go as far as Antioch. Again, notice that the tidings entered into the ears of the church, well, obviously we know that buildings do not have ears. Therefore, we know that when the word church is used, it is referring to people and not physical constructions. So far, we have defined that the word church in the New Testament refers to the people and not buildings. But we still have one more term to define before we can fully answer our main question, and that is the term spiritual. The word spiritual in today's society is a very loosely defined term that can have a multiplicity of meanings. Some may say that spirituality is an experience, while others narrow it down to a feeling or thought. And though spirituality can produce feelings and experiences, it is far too vague without a basis from whence the spiritual experiences are originating from. For example, people all over the world, ranging from a variety of religions, use the term spiritual to refer to things that are not tangible. Even within the Bible, depending on the context, there are numerous definitions that can be applied. The Greek word used in the New Testament for spiritual is pneumatikos, which can be defined as 1. Relating to the human spirit or rational soul as part of the man which is akin to God and serves as his instrument or organ, that which possesses the nature of the rational soul. 2. Belonging to a spirit or a being higher than man but inferior to God. 3. Belonging to the divine spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, one who is filled with and governed by the Spirit of God. Or four, pertaining to the wind or breath, windy, exposed to the wind or blowing. As you can see, the word spiritual is not one that can be thrown around loosely without having some basis of context. For the purpose of our main question, I will use definition three as our jumping off point as I believe that this is what people are attempting to ask. And that is, can a person have a relationship with God without going into a church building? The answer to that question is, yes, you can have a relationship with God without entering into a specific church building. But since the church is not a building, then the answer to that question needs to be fleshed out a little more. Let me explain. Many individuals in the Old Testament had certain situations that they found themselves in. Situations such as being surrounded by pagan nations, being on the run from persecution, or physical infirmities. Even today, people may have certain issues that hinder them from gathering together as well. I mean, today, as of the making of this video, people are unable to meet together as they once did due to the spread of a virus. 
Every instance needs to be judged individually, which means that a blanket statement cannot be given. What I will address, though, are those instances in which people who do have the opportunity to gather with other believers choose not to. In Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 to 25, it reads, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful, and let us consider one another, in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. We as Christians have confessed that we believe in Jesus Christ and hold that every word written in Scripture is true. Thereby, we also hold to the teachings of the apostles, as we know that God used them to communicate with his people. Therefore, everything written in Scripture is for us to grow and learn about what it means to have a true relationship with God, because he has proven himself to be worthy of our trust. With that said, the writer of Hebrews continues by encouraging the believers to encourage one another through love and good works. He states this because we as Christians can become discouraged in life, and nothing is a better encourager than a person being shown love in the midst of pain. But notice that he doesn't just relegate it to just love, but love and good works. This means that a person is also encouraged to keep working for the Lord. It is similar to when a person volunteers to help those in need. That kind of work allows Christians to stop focusing on their life's difficulties and instead to help someone else in their difficulties, thus resulting in not only meeting someone else's needs, but also to have a sense of gratitude, which in turn helps us through our tough times. He continues by telling the church not to forsake assembling together as some do, but to instead encourage each other. This is a command given by the writer of Hebrews to God's people because we need each other. As Christians, we are not on a solo mission. He then brings gravity to the situation by reminding them that the day is quickly approaching. The day being spoken of here is the return of Christ. But with that day, there also comes persecution, the elevation of false teachers, and evil in all forms. Thus, we need to help each other through these difficulties. Simply put, we are God's gift to each other. And this is why the writer of Hebrews tells us not to forsake one another. Also, one of the commands of Christ still binding on Christians today is to love one another. Now, how can we do that if we avoid one another? Let me also add that the amount of people is not a factor. It can be as few as you and one other believer or you and thousands of believers gathering together. It also makes no difference whether you gather in a building, a home, or even outside. There is no legalistic location or number so long as you gather together. In summary, to answer the question, does someone need to attend church to be spiritual? Again, if the term church is strictly understood to just mean a building, then no. A person can still have a fruitful relationship with God without stepping into a building. But if the question is whether a person can choose to not associate with God's people and still maintain a healthy relationship with God, I would say that they should not do that. Here is another good way to look at it. If someone were to get married to a person who has children and then decides that they do not want to associate with that person's children, will that person's relationship be hindered with their spouse? Of course. Therefore, if you would like to have a full relationship with God, then you must have a relationship with his children. I pray that this lesson was helpful to those who have wrestled with this question. If you found this to be helpful, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and drop a comment in the comment section below letting me know what other questions you would like to see answered in a future video. Or email me directly at servantofchristministries at gmail.com. And don't forget to subscribe as that helps the channel greatly. Also, if you would like to help support this channel, there are links in the description box below where you can help. God bless.